Uh, greetings, strange humans, and welcome to another video from the CJH Entertainment. And I have guests here, RJ. Hello. And, hello. And um, we have a topic here uh, about uh, uh, studios wanting to introduce super fan focus groups to uh, uh -huh. uh almost smother the flames of fan backlash yeah what I mean, your this thoughts is on part that? of a yeah i mean this is part of a bigger article just about uh how studios are combating toxic fans and toxic fandom because in short the article kind of brings up how you know toxic fandoms and controversies online are having not a well what's the way to put it not like it's like killing things for them but it's more so it's having an adverse effect on trying to create audience from the entertainment so there's steps being taken place to try and navigate very divisive things amongst fandoms you know the article talked a lot about uh some of the star wars stuff especially I feel like star wars what was it lord of the rings rings of power they brought up a little bit too yeah Mostly Star Wars, though. Star Wars was, like, the big focal point of, like, the examples used. But, yeah, uh, yeah I guess the big thing they were talking right about right. was that they want to do these focus groups to where they'll talk to fans in these groups and be like, how would you feel if we did this? How would you feel as a fan of this property if we change this? And I guess they're doing that because if the focus groups tell them that they wouldn't like it, they can go back and fix it before it actually comes out to try and steer clear of controversy. So it, it, we're living in interesting times to where now this is kind of like the steps being taken. Isn't this what they kind of did before with like screenings? Sort right. of, yeah. I mean, well, with the screenings, though, when they do test screenings, oftentimes it's, like, really just normies, just, like, average people yeah. they pull from the street or people who, you know, are part of demographics they want to test. Um, this really is more so trying to do testing, I guess, like, a test screening, per se, with, like, super hardcore fans, you know? Yeah. Um, it's really to try and see what the hardcores think about this. Like the people who basically are going to spend all the money, like the most amount of money trying to, you know, on, yeah. on this stuff. Now, my own uh, opinion on this is I think it's going to hurt the art of filmmaking where sometimes fans don't know what they want or, um, in the case of some movies where you give them the opposite what they want and they end up liking it. Really yeah, I, I, I don't think that this is necessarily the best idea. Mostly because I think the fear is well, are you making stuff by committee? Like, you can't challenge yeah. your audiences anymore. You can't try and push the envelope. It's got to be extremely safe and market tested and you have to approve all these things and make sure that nobody's going to be mad about something it's like well then you kind of run the risk of like well you can't really do anything interesting with your art it's just pure slop at that point it's not anything of, of interest or merit exactly and it just becomes almost nostalgia bait in a way yeah, I mean, nostalgia isn't a bad thing per se, it's just how it's used. And yeah. I think we run the risk of, you know, things just becoming very stale, stagnant. Um, I, yeah. I, I don't necessarily think mm. that the idea of doing fan focus groups is going to make this stuff better. I think there are more inherent issues than hey, does this story respect Star Wars canon, you know, or does it, like, impact the events of another movie? Like, there are deeper issues that should be addressed before we get into pleasing hardcore fans. Like, you know, I, I know it's a stereotypical thing to say, and it's not necessarily, you know, it's, it's a very broad solution, but how about we focus on better writing, better, you know, making sure our production schedules are, are cleared up so we don't have wonky CGI because they're rushing to finish a blockbuster movie. You know, there, there's deeper issues that should probably be addressed that just aren't. 
Exactly. And at the end of the day, that's all we want. We want the good stories. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we we do want good stories, but we also, I don't know, just we we also just want good movies or just like we want to be entertained. And I'm fine with being entertained by stuff that's like, I mean, we all like our junk food. I just oh, don't yeah. want everything to be junk food, you know. Yeah, exactly. Have some healthy stuff too, and I. The thing is too that I wonder if stuff like this is going to impact filmmakers even wanting to do a franchise or do a major IP film. If this is the environment they have to walk into and deal with creatively. Yeah, it seems almost like they want to do more popcorn films than they do, you know, actual movies that make you think say joker or um uh, the dark knight trilogy or stuff like that you know what i mean yeah yeah it it's just you know so it, and it's funny too because i feel like all of this goes back to the last jedi like that movie in particular is probably what yeah. spawned so much of the modern Everything uh, kind of went down. Modern online discourse and just the way things go now. Just you can pinpoint that one movie is where all this is stemming from. It's kind of like a slow build up, almost like it was a slow burn of the fandom just collapsing in on itself, almost. Yeah. In fighting and whatnot. Oh, for sure, for sure. So, do you have any uh, add-ons to this? I would just say that I think that this has the potential to really screw screw over creatives. I think it has the potential to just really produce a bunch of mediocrity. I think that overall... I understand they want to navigate the stuff a bit better. You know, the article talked about too, they're doing like social media training for actors and talent just to put them through like a boot camp so they know what they could potentially get be getting into. But it's yeah. just I, I don't think this is gonna solve anything because at the end of the day, the people who these lucrative channels that that make the kind of content trashing on everything, they're going to find something to pick at and make a video about and make money off of regardless of what you do. So at the end of the day, just make stuff that appeals to the consumer base. And, you know, sometimes you got to take swings because, you know, if you take a swing, it doesn't work out. That's one thing, but sometimes you take a swing and it pays off great. And then you make something new and something exciting. Yeah. That, that is a good point you bring up because the clickbait on, uh, thing on youtube is really getting out of hand where oh, they, yeah, yeah yeah clickbait's always they, been they, issue, they even worse. took out of uh context daisy Ridley's most recent comments and what's the other thing um joker 2 so there's people on youtube right now they're reviewing reviewing the movie and saying it's shit without even seeing it yeah yeah. yeah, but that is just kind of the the modern era of discourse that we live in, you know? Yeah. Uh, give it a second. Uh, let me share my screen. Yeah, this way I can get a couple of videos out. All right. So next topic. Disney reportedly made one billion in Star Wars merchandise sales last year. What I thought no one was with? buying the toys though. Yeah, everyone keeps saying that no one's buying the merchandise. The merchandise is failing, and then it's like, oh, here you go, billion dollars. Yeah, never I mind mean, all the Baby Yoda. I know it's Grogu, but all the Baby Yoda sales they had. Yeah, it's probably the Baby Yodas. It's probably the uh... God. What else? The oh. main well, who, who characters, I guess. Right now? Yeah, no, on the Han Darth Vader. Vader I'm, trying to, you know? I'm trying to think about like what big toys are even out there right now. Like I know you got your Baby Yodas, your Legos, your Mandos, R R twos, R twos, Darth Vaders, Dar- your Vaders. 
Boba Fett. Your Boba Fett, yeah, your Boba Fetts. Yeah. But yeah, it's very interesting that the merch, you know, because like you can go to some of the stores, and yeah, some of like they they definitely overstocked on some stuff, like they definitely overstocked yeah. on some Ahsoka stuff, or like you still see Rogue One toys and Last Jedi toys in the clearance aisle still, because they yeah. definitely and, overproduced for sure. And then people take that and saying that it's not making any money, but and then. We see stories like this where they are. Because Star Wars is still a brand that makes money. Whether or not the shows and movies still do is debatable. But the merchandise for all the old stuff is still selling. Yeah, I mean, again, um, Star Wars is a massive brand. It's always been a merchandising powerhouse. This shouldn't be surprising to anyone that it's making money, but I mean, I guess some people are surprised. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, yeah, I mean, it's not, it makes sense. I mean, yeah. I mean, I don't got yeah. much else to say on this. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'll be curious though to see what like certain. What I would like to know from this is like what exactly is selling the most in terms of like what yeah, merchandise is, it, is selling. Is it like the new stuff or is the it newer old stuff? stuff? Is it yeah. older stuff? Like what specific series or brands are selling the most? You know, just out of curiosity, I would like to know like what exactly is moving units versus not. Yeah. Um. Let's see what else is on the news for uh, Twitter. Good thing about editing stuff is like I can just remove all the dead air too. Yeah. Um. Any thoughts on Joker too? Um, uh, Joker two. I haven't seen it yet. I'm going to see it eventually. Uh, people are definitely divided on it. It's, it seems like it's very divisive. Which, I mean, I kind of expect it to be to divisive. Sorry. Divisive. Can't even talk straight. Uh, I expect it to be kind of divisive just because it's a musical. It's a sequel to a movie people thought didn't really need a sequel. Plus two, you're like, it's just very, it seems to be very different from what the first film was. It's not trying to be like the first one. It's trying to just go in its own direction. You know, it, it just seemed like for sure it was just going to be one of those things where it's like some people are going to love it, some people are going to absolutely hate it. So, we'll see. I mean, I, I don't think it's going to do as well as the first film, though. It's not doing as well critically. I don't think the audience is going to attach themselves to it the same way they did the first one just because I think it's just so different stylistically. They took a big creative swing, making it a musical. And now it's, it's, you know, it, it's going to limit its appeal a bit, but the we'll see. I mean, we'll see how the... things go this weekend. I mean, I, I don't think it's going to make as much money, but maybe it'll still make a decent chunk of change. We'll see. Yeah. The first one is also a lightning in the bottle situation too, right? Yeah, I think so too. I think it just came out at the right time. I think it just felt, fresher it felt you know i think it, it's weird because i don't think the marketing for joker 2 has been as strong as the first one i feel like they haven't pushed it as much as they could have um at least from what i've seen maybe, maybe people would disagree but i feel like the marketing hasn't been nearly as strong and i just think you know it, it, it just seems like it's a film that they cut down the appeal of a bit just going in certain creative directions I agree. 